In the seminary, when a student takes New Testament Greek, the language in which the New Testament was written, the first sections you read are from the Gospel of John. We read these sections first because they are the simplest. The Gospel of John, of all the books of the New Testament, has the simplest vocabulary and the shortest sentences, which make it a very good introduction to the language of the New Testament. However, what is easiest to understand and translate on the surface is in fact the most difficult and mysterious to master in terms of its ultimate meaning. I think this is true for the selection from the Gospel of John that we heard just now. The language is quite simple. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God, have faith in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. What is simple to understand on the surface, however, invites us into a deep mystery. And the mystery we are invited to probe today is that of Jesus' coming and going. Again, to say that is simple, to understand coming and going is not difficult. But this coming and going point to deep realities about how God has saved us and how God continues to relate to us. This passage of the Gospel of John comes right before the Lord's passion. Jesus is preparing his apostles to endure the doubt, the sadness, the turmoil of what is coming. And to do this, he tells them that he will be going away. And what that means is that he will be going away to die. He knows their hearts will be troubled. He knows their faith will be tested and shaken when they see him lifted up on the cross, when they see him die, and when they see him sealed in the tomb. But he lets them, them in on what he will be doing when he is gone. He tells them that in his death, through his death, he will be preparing a place for them, and that he will return and take them back to himself. When Jesus goes away, he goes away only to come back and to draw us closer to himself. In his death, he goes away. Why? to destroy the power of sin and death, to separate us from him, to fill that black hole with a new light, and to draw all of us close to him in and through his death and in and through our own deaths. We speak these words very often in funeral masses, we speak this truth that because Jesus died, death is no longer a dead end, but rather a way, a path from darkness to a new light and life. That's not the only going and coming, however, that Jesus talks about today. Towards the end of the gospel, he speaks of another. He speaks of going to the Father with the consequence 
of us receiving the power to do works even greater than he performed in his earthly life. This going is not the going of his death, but rather the going of his ascension into heaven. We all live in the aftermath of this going. Just as the apostles could not see Jesus when he was sealed in the tomb and had to wait in hope and in faith. We do not see Jesus as the crowd saw him when he walked the earth, as the apostles saw him when he rose from the dead. Yet, this going away to heaven has a similar effect as his other goings. His going up to heaven has the effect of us being drawn closer to him, drawing into his life, into his heart. By going away, Jesus comes close to us through the outpouring of his spirit, and we become members of his body. When he went away in death, he destroyed the barrier of death that stands between us and him. When he ascended into heaven and poured forth his spirit, he overcame the barrier between our heart and his. He lives in us. We are a part of him. And because of that, we are clothed in amazing power and are able to carry his love and his light to every corner of the world. That is the great work of which he speaks at the end of this gospel. What is true of salvation history, how God has redeemed the world with his goings and comings, is also true in the rhythm of our individual relationships with God. Sometimes, through no fault of our own, God seems to go away. We do not feel him in our hearts. We feel lost. We are tempted to be troubled. But in those moments, we are called to remember the words of this gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Even though I seem to be far away, even though it seems like I have gone, I'm coming back to be closer to you. Sometimes... God leaves or seems to leave our lives, not to abandon us, not to punish us, but to prepare us for greater gifts, to prepare us for a greater faith, a more resilient hope, a more persevering love. It's so easy in those dark times to despair, to think that God has forgotten about us. That's when we have to remember these words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I am coming back to you. When we do not feel God working, when he seems distance, he is nevertheless working in the deeper parts of our lives, preparing a way for us that we could never imagine for ourselves. And then, at an unknown moment, he returns. He fills us with light. And we see that in those days, in those weeks, even in those years, when we felt like he was gone, when we felt abandoned, he was with us all the while, guiding us by the hand, leading us to someplace good. Today, whether you feel the Lord is very near or very distant, the truth is, he is close to you. 
He is working in your life. He is preparing a path, preparing a place for you to live with him in joy. May we never let our hearts be troubled. May we have faith in Jesus and allow his comings and goings to strengthen our love of him.